this is the third video in the series of installing everything locally, which is AI automation from the absolute basics. So in this video, firstly, we'll be installing the text-to-speech model. Then we will look into the complete backend of how the model works and every deep customization that you can do in this model. And this would be the most detailed video you see on these topics. So let's start by installing the text-to-speech model on your computer locally. I'll head to this document, which will be provided in the description as well. So the text-to-speech model has two general platform variants. So the first variant uses a CPU to generate the audio and the text-to-speech. The other uses GPU. The GPU variant is significantly faster than the CPU one, but it only works if you have a NVIDIA GPU and it's also enabled inside of the container. So I have a NVIDIA GPU, so I'll copy this command and then head to my text editor to make some changes if I have to. Here you can see I already have the text to speech models installed on my computer. What I'll do is make some changes. As you know, that you cannot have two models of the same name. So I'll make this TTS2 and that's all I need to do, right? Because I'm not going to be turning on the actual models. So there won't be any port conflict. So let's take a look at the entire command. So we'll be starting a Docker container in detached mode while giving all the GPU access inside the container. This will be the port mapping. We're mapping the 888 port directly from inside the container to outside. The name will be Kokoro TTS2. And this is where we're fetching the image from. And as you can see in the CPU version, we fetch a certainly different image, which is the CPU variant. So now what I'll do is copy this command and head to Docker. Ensure that your terminal is running and click on terminal. Then paste the command here and run it. If you have the image downloaded locally, it's going to be pretty fast. But if not, it's going to take a few minutes before it downloads everything. Then you're going to see this confirmation. And this is the container ID on which your text-to-speech model is running on. And here you can see I have the TTS running. And now you can see everything is being initialized inside the container. And it's going to take a few minutes before it's ready for you to use. And there you go. So it took about 40 seconds to get it running after it's installed. Maybe on the initial run, it might take a bit longer for you, but else it should be pretty fast. So now you have the text speech model running and you can access it here. So I'm going to click on this link and it's going to take me to the text to speech model web UI. This is the port at which the model is running. But if you say web in front of it, you will see the web UI. And if you write docs in front of it, you will see the API documentation. That's how you can access both of these pages. So let's go back here and let's look at the next step. So now we have installed the text speech model. Now we'll see how you can connect it to any end. So I have this entire demo ready to show you all the advanced features as well. So what I'll do is take this initial workflow node and connect it to create text to speech. Right. So now I have this node ready. So first, let me demonstrate to you the most easiest thing, which is how you can generate speech directly from any end. So I'll be connecting this trigger node to the create text to speech node. So it has to be a post request. And this is the URL, which you can get from here as well. As you can see, you can access the model via API inside of any 10 at this location. So once you have this, and this is the exact endpoint, which you can even see here. So I'll remove web and say docs. So here it is. V1 audio speech. And you get all the parameters and everything that you want to see here. So if you do that, and this is the body you need, you need to send a minimum of model, the input, and the voice. So if I say input is, this is the Dorian. So if I input, this is the Dorian AI community, and I click on test, it is going to reply with the MP3 file of the audio, and I can view it from here. This is the Dorian AI community. This is the so now that was the most basic implementation of this text speech model inside of anything. Now let's get ahead into the more advanced stuff. So the first thing that you need to know is the naming scheme of the audios. So if you come to this repository, the official repository of the text speech model, you will see how they have configured the names. So they have three columns in the table. One is the category, the other is the voice and the language code. So for the US, it will say a. And depending on male and female, it's an F for female, M for the male. So this is American male, American male, American female. For the British, it says B and F for female. For the French, it says F. And for example, if you want a French male, you will say FN. And then for Italian, it says I. 
for Japanese J and Z for Mandarin. Now the next thing is, can you clone your voice and build custom voices? The short answer is yes, but in reality it's pretty hard. Even though I'm going to attach this very basic custom voices template, but this won't be enough for that. So let me show you how exactly our file stored. So the audio files are actually stored inside the directory in files. Then click on app. And if you go to API and then SRC, then if you go down in the voices, you will see that these are all the PT files, .pt. So this is where all the files are stored. You can technically create all your custom PT files for custom voices. Well, that's going to be pretty hard. So in the next video, I'll show you how you can do it very easily. So we're not going to be using Copro for that as there are better solutions for cloning. So now let's get ahead. So now let's see all the customizations you can do. So on the surface, the model looks very plain. For example, there are a few voices and you just send your audio and you get it back. But this is an extremely customizable and powerful text-to-speech model considering how lightweight it is. So it is built in with extreme customization for how the sound should be like, phonetic stresses, and you have all these modifiers, which I'm going to show you in a moment. So the most basic function, for example, if you want to know how many voices are there, you can just use this endpoint, which is V1 audio voices. And if you run this, it's going to return to you all the voices that are currently available in the model. And I'll run it again. And there we go. So now you have an array of all the voices. And you can see we have American, British. I'm not sure what the E is. Then we have Italian, Japanese, Chinese, probably Polish. So that's how you can know all the voices you have. The next function is the basic text-to-speech that I already showed you here that you can input it. And you can also make it dynamic. For example, I'll make it dynamic now. So I have this simple script topic. So I'll say children like stories. And if I run this, I'll get this output. So here I have this script writing agent. And inside the input, I've given it Write me a small script of about 100 words. And then I tell it about this topic, which I get from here. And this is going to give me a script. And I'm using the open router node with GPT-4 or mini. And then I can feed this script inside of the text-to-speech model. And actually, it's just giving me... So if you look at the output, you'll see that it's giving me a lot of things that I don't need. So what I'll do is turn on the output parser. And then I'll specifically say it only return nothing else. And this time, hopefully, it's going to skip the title and everything. And I can attach the output parser, not this one. I need the other output parser. Let's see the actual thing. OK, it's still messing up. It's still adding a bit of structure. But after this, it's not going to give us any structural issues. So I'll say script, and then I'll say empty space so it can add all that stuff there. So now I'm going to run this again. And this time it's going to give me only the script in the output. As you can see, I only have the script. And now I can feed it into this node and customize this. And I'll remove this from here and add the script here. And then I'll run it and you will see JSON parameter needs a valid JSON. So this is a common error. This happens because sometimes when you have this JSON, you will see that it has some extra codes here. You'll see, so it breaks up the JSON. So if the input contains codes, it's going to break it down. So you have two options here. Either you can just manually tell it to not have any quotes in it, either single or double, or you can have a separate script node, which I have here. So what this does is it removes everything, right? It removes all kinds of special characters. So I'll show you that later, but here I'm just going to say it. And I'll say, and do not add any kind of single or double quotes. And after I do this, hopefully it should not give me any kind of artifacts. And there you go. So now I think it looks fine. Okay, so this looks fine. So if I run this now, you will see that it's starting to execute and it should be pretty fast considering I'm on the GPU. So there you go. So I believe this would be about 30 to 40 seconds and this was extremely fast because I was on the GPU version. So I'll leave it 
As the sun sets and stars twinkle in the night sky, children snuggle under their blankets. So that's how you can generate with a custom script. And every time the script changes, it will automatically be different in this node. So you have a dynamic solution. So now let's look at the next option, which is the text to speech with timestamp captions. So if you go here, you'll see that you have these options on how you can get the timestamps. Here you go. So firstly, you can generate it and then you can fetch the timestamps using this endpoint. So for this one, what I'll do is come here and I'll even make it slower just to demonstrate. So you have all these options. For example, the you can so you can customize the response format, have a download format, return timestamps as true, speed. I'll just customize it as 0 0.8, and you can also see all the things you have here. So you have this. You can stream it to be true, so it's going to be real time, and you can also give it a language code to have custom language, and you have all these custom options about normalization as well. So what I'll do now is run the previous node i'll actually connect this here and now you will see that i have a script as the input and i'll open this and add the script as an input here and run it and this is going to say the service was not able to process your request okay so let's look at the details processing the error so if you look into the details you will see that i've made the error about the file name so it says the am michael PT is not found, which means that I have either given it a wrong name or it just doesn't exist. So for me, I just made typo. I'm going to run it again. And this time it should work. And there you go. I have the output of the audio and I can also fetch the timestamps. So this is the binary file. If you look into the JSON, you will see that it also gave me some more information because I added the return timestamps true flag. So that gave me the date, the server the file type that is mp3 and also gave me the cache information and also gave me the timestamps path this is exact json which we need and which we can fetch from this node so if i run this you will see that i am able to fetch the json file and if i view this you will see i have all the timestamps already configured the next topic is about voice mixing so in the kokoro model you can mix different voices from the already available ones so here you can see the exact code that you need. So this is the JSON request that you're going to send. So you can have multiple voices and their configurations. Even though the voice is normalized to one, sometimes it takes more values. For example, even if you do 1.8, it's still going to work. But to make it work correctly, I would recommend to you that no matter how many voices you need, their sum should be equal to one. So I'm going to use this and I'll also show you how you can use these advanced stuff, which I'm going to. I'm going to run this audio right now from here directly. I will cut this off and put it here. And then run this node. This is the audio that we get and you can hear it now. Listen to this smoothness. Can you believe it's open source? So you can customize things. And now I can even say speed. So now after I've added the speed, I'm going to run this. Listen to this smoothness. Can you believe it's open source? Li so you can see how good it is. And I actually got this text from here in this collab notebook that I'm going to link you to. So you can customize different voices. And the reason why it's so human-like, because these full stops and the question marks. So now let me take you to the entire section dedicated to this. So here's the other thing. This is a detailed example of how you can run it. But rather than doing it here, I'm just going to run it here in this and I'll generate the speech and you will see how personalized it is. And sometimes it also makes some errors. For example, it misinterprets this and actually ends up pronouncing it. It's still here, she whispered. Not outside, no. Inside. She thought she was alone, but the mirror blinked. It blinked. A shadow moved slowly. And you can see how you can personalize it. And here are all the rules you need to know. So if you add a single quote, it's going to give a stronger emphasis on the syllable. If you give this little comma, this is going to happen. And you can see how it's pronounced. This is how it encodes it. So if you see the web UI for this, and I write, this is so cool. And you will see how it tokenizes it. So this is the exact tokens for producing this. So this is, this is so cool according to the model. And you can see all the details here. So some of the things need to be in square brackets and any 10 automatically makes it a link 
So this is how the actual thing will look. You have to add these things in the square brackets. So this option is for overriding pronunciations. For example, if you have some different names in different languages or some different kind of words you want to pronounce differently. So this is how you do it. So rather than having word, you can just have the custom actual pronunciation and the tokens. We also have the stress modifiers that after you have written the word, you can just add the bracket and minus one or plus one to increase or decrease stress. And here are all the rules that you need. That if you add a period, it's going to give a longer pause with a comma, a shorter pause, and all these rules you can see here. And you can also give them multiple times. For example, I got a very long pause or at least a delay in this sentence because I added three of them. Right, so I can give them a bit of emphasis, but I cannot just add unlimited of these. That's going to break the voice as well. It can only handle about five to ten. So that's how you can manage different kind of voices. And through these combinations, you can make your own presets, which I'm going to release later. As it says, I will share them later. I have made some of them, but I haven't completed the entire list yet. So then you will have the entire presets, for example, a criminal or some kind of horror story preset. So you can just use the pre-made voices. Until then, you can just use this entire guide to make voices for yourself and have a good time exploring the model. I'll see you in the next one.